Yo, what up? This your boy Ken of Stones, aka Coffee Weeston. This your boy DOE, Good Rebel Bowl. And we are the Dirty Hills. You already know, man, you tuning in to 1130 Podcast. Mm -hmm. Not 730, but 1130. Dude, dude, that's my job. Not 730, but 1130. Yeah. And you have been <laughs> Dirty Hills Approved. What it do, everybody? It's your man Dre, aka Dre on Wheels. This is episode 69 of the 1130 Podcast Talk Pro Wrestling. What's good? How everybody doing out there on this beautiful Friday, you guys? Happy Friday. Hope everybody is doing well, man. For real. Uh, you know what that means, man. It's Friday, so it's time to talk some pro wrestling. Good morning, good night, good afternoon to all my listeners all across the world, wherever you may be, Germany, Mexico, the States, the UK. Thank you so much for tuning back in to the show. So uh, wherever you listen to me at on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, uh, make sure you subscribe and also subscribe to the 1130 Podcast YouTube channel. Make sure you like it, leave a comment and do all that great stuff. And don't forget to follow the 1130 Podcast on all social media platforms. But you guys, man, I'm back at it. Like I said, man, I'm Friday. I'm excited with a great guest, you guys, this week coming to me from New York, you guys. Yes, my guy, Tony Batista. He's an independent pro wrestler. He's doing his thing on the indie scene. He's going to stop passing just chat it up with me, man. He's uh he's the WWWA uh heavyweight champion, you guys. He's the super crazy pro wrestling United States champion and the Texas Wrestling Association heavyweight champion, man. So my man is a chap. He's gonna be joining me, man. Uh, but before we get into everything, you guys, shout out to my guest who was on last week, Warren Marlowe. Thank you so much for joining me. Let's get into the show. We ain't gonna waste no more time. Yo, Tony Batista, how's it going? I'm going good. Feeling like a million bucks. Just the way I'm performing. How are you guys hey, doing? Hey, hey, that's good, man. That's good. I'm doing wonderful, man. I'm doing wonderful. I appreciate you, you know, like I said, you were talking before, um, you know, the invite, you know, to come on, man, to chat some pro wrestling. I really dig what you're doing. Uh, lately, we're now, you know, coming into the fall. I've been trying to, you know, Swerve it a little bit different direction going back. The summer was, you know, I was just cooling, but I was trying to get a lot of independent pro wrestlers on the show, and I understand they were busy and, you know, with COVID and stuff like that. But uh, we're making it happen, and I appreciate you, Tony Batista, man, being on the show. How life treat you? Good, good. I appreciate you guys having me, man. I mean, I'm, you know, anytime I get to share my story on any platform, uh, it's a thrill for me. But I'm doing great, man. Uh, obviously, things were slow before, uh, but now business is picking up. And uh, uh, and I'm doing the thing. And I'm doing the thing at an elevated level. I mean, it seems like I'm, 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 I'm getting better and better and better. And uh, my goals haven't been reached yet. Uh, but I have a kill list. And anybody in my way better come bring it because I'm bringing it 110%. Mm -hmm. I mean, I've got my foot on the pedal and, and I'm not letting off anytime soon. Man, I like that. I really do. I, I like that. You know, you ain't supposed to let your foot off the pedal, man. You're trying to, you know, grow and keep grinding out there, man. What you doing, though? So I respect what you're doing. I really do. Um, but before we get into everything, you guys here on the show this week on Talk Pro Wrestling, yo, I want to send the condolence and shout out to uh, Daphne, you know, independent pro wrestler, um, passed away, you guys, yesterday, Thursday, um, I think it was Suicide. And, uh, you know, she was, uh, she wrestled back in the days of WCW. And I, I was like, well, I know this woman from, I know her. She's very familiar. And I was watching Impact back in, you know, 2011-ish. And she was on there and uh, she passed away. So, man, you know, she was going through some times. Everybody check on your friends, man, for real. So uh, uh, mental health is, is really, really important. Very, very yeah, important. It is. And it's something that I feel passionate about. Um, I served 15 years in the military and I'm a combat veteran. And I'm using, I'm losing a lot of friends, a lot of former students, because I was an instructor in the academy, and um, it's never a fun thing. We've all, we, 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 we in, in, in my community, we've almost become a little bit desensitized to it, but it, it, a lot of us, the old heads, I guess you can call us, um, is affecting us in a, in a, in a large way. Um, so like, uh, you never know who's going through what. Don't assume. Um, it's okay to check up on your people, and it's okay to be vulnerable and say. I'm not feeling something right now within myself or whatever. You know the saying is okay not to. It's okay to be not okay. Um, it's just not okay to keep it inside. So, um, yeah, rest in peace, to Daphne, and uh, to anybody struggling with mental health. You know, uh, all it is is a phone call, text, or whatever it is. But say something. Yeah, you're right about that, man. Say something, man. 
you know, nobody want to, you know, suffer in silence. So, you know, really, you know, the condolence really go out to that right there, man. Yo, but uh, we're going to move on, man. And you're on the podcast, Tony Batista, once again, I appreciate you joining me on the show. Like I was saying, um, man, I've been, you know, trying to get these guys, man, independent wrestlers that's doing, they think real hot on the scenes. Let's come on and share light, to shine light on them. But uh, how's your journey been since pro wrestling? You was, you was also talking about being in the military for about 15 years. We're going to get into that. But how's your journey been, you know, since getting into wrestling and stuff? You know, uh, it's a lot of a, a roller coaster ride. Um, but one that I wouldn't trade for the world. I, I, I love, I can honestly say that I love pro wrestling. Um, I love being a pro wrestler. Cause it's, cause I'm always a fan first, you know, um, and I'm always still a fan, but I love being a pro wrestler. I love staying on this side of the fence. Um, a lot of struggles, uh, a lot of adversity, you know, a lot of obstacles and hurdles like any other wrestler that is really into this stuff goes through. Um, but it's on the come up. Um, I have a little bit of chip on my shoulder cause I feel like my respect hasn't been paid to me. Not that I've earned any more respect than any, than anybody else, but I feel like a lot of respect is being thrown out there for people who don't necessarily earn that. And, I'm, and I feel like I'm in a different class. I feel like I'm an elite athlete. Um, and uh, I have a chip on my shoulder. And, and, and I'm, and I'm uh, I have this bad habit, which some people may say that is good, that I, I'm just never comfortable, never, never complacent, and I'm never satisfied. So, you know, you guys spoke about the, the, the titles that I, that I hold right now. I'm very proud of them. Um, I'm proud of them because of what it means, not because of what I've done, but what it means to have it and what it represents. But I mean, that it honestly means nothing to me as an individual because I feel like there's still more to do. And, um, and having the title is not enough, uh, continuing to work harder, even harder because you have the title. It's, it's, it's something that is, is a challenge that I'm, that I'm looking forward to accepting that I've have accepted. And, uh, I just feel like this, the sky is the limit and I haven't reached that, that Zenith yet. And, um, and I'm cool with that because I like working. Hey, I agree with that. I agree with that. You, you just throw the, uh, the thought out of my mind when I was just saying, but I was about to say, well, you got three titles, man. So I understand, you know, you, you don't want to be complacent. You want to keep working hard and stuff like that. You know, you want to be the main event. You want to be the guy people call on. So I feel you on that though. Uh, you say you, you've been a fan. How long you been a fan of wrestling since you were a little young? I can't tell you the age because <laughs> it just goes back as far as I remember. You know what I mean? It was on TV. From Story has it. My grandma recently told me this. My paternal grandmother, she said, well, you know, when uh, I've always had wrestling on on Saturday mornings, you know, whether it was Lucha Libre on the Spanish channels or WWF TV, because being from New York, you get a lot of WWF. Um, then later on, we started getting, you know, uh, uh, WCW. And, uh, you know, it's just it was there, you know, it was the Hulk Hogan's. It was that era, the Ultimate Warriors, Million Dollar Man. You know, Mr. Perfect's Reverend Shipping Group, Big Ball, you could go on and on. Mm-hmm. And it was just there. And, and I, I just, I don't know, I just loved it. I loved it. I loved it so much. And uh, I, 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 I just felt even deeper in love with it as I got older. And then somewhere along the line, I kind of lost track. It's like, you know, yeah. having that, you know, going to a different school and losing contact with that good friend of yours. And then, because uh, I was too grown or something, you know? And then uh, next thing you know, I just, it just, it came back again, full circle. And the, and at least likely it's some places that I would have thought that I would have felt reiterate my love for wrestling again. Um, and, and, and now I'm here, you know, just, I, it's just, it's been a part of my life, literally. Yeah. yeah. You know? I feel you. I feel you. And a lot of people that I talk to, whether he's on a podcast or whether it's a buddy, uh, you know, a friend or whatever, you know, a lot of people even fell out of it and, you know, it came back and stuff. And they always say, hey, Amy, if it's meant, it'll come back to you. So it came back to you. And man, <laughs> you're doing you're doing the thing right now, though. You, you really are. Though. Who was your favorite wrestler growing up, though? I had a bunch. I had a bunch of different eras. Because okay. my style is like a, a, a culmination of a lot of people. You know what I mean? You take a little because, I mean, wrestling's been been in for so, so long. People don't mm-hmm. realize how old wrestling is. You can say that everything has been done. Um, so I take a little bit of this, a little bit of that. You know, obviously, Hulk Hogan, Mark. I mean, you know, I was there saying my prayers, eating my vitamins, and, yeah. and, and, and doing my training, right? The three yeah. demandments, says, and that's everybody. Then the next hot thing comes out, Ultimate, Ultimate Warrior. Who doesn't love him? You know, I used to love Brutus the Barber Beefcake and Bret Hart growing up a lot um, because Bret Hart was cool with the glasses and the jacket. Yeah. And <laughs> And then as I got older, you start, I started liking the guys who actually, you know, the, the guys who could really, really, really wrestle and entertain me, the Baron Sheep Rick Roos and Mr. Perfects, the Shawn Michaels, you know what I mean? And then come the Attitude Era, 
who doesn't like the rock and stone cold? Everybody wants to be the rock. I, 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 you know, we all want to be the rock and stone cold. You know what I mean? And, uh, and that was pretty much it for my, for, for my childhood. And then, hey. uh, and now it's more like, I don't have a favorite no more because I am my favorite. Hey. <laughs> I, I, I value wrestlers for uh, different reasons now. You know what I mean? Because there's so many talented wrestlers out there. You just hard to choose one for one reason when you can learn so, so much from so many of them. Um, but yeah, I go back to those days, you know, I'm a uh, uh, late eighties, early nineties Mark. Um, but that attitude era, yeah, you know, it did something for me internally. Yeah. Not that, not that I knew that I quite wanted to be a professional wrestler. Cause I didn't think those were attainable goals. I mean, how do you become a, pro- I, I didn't know that was a thing, but it was something that told me, man, I wish I could have something that does that for me. You know what I mean? And, uh, and then it was baseball. Uh, so baseball kind of served that until baseball was no longer. And then I, 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 I fell into the right place at the right time, found the right wrestling school, and the rest is history. Hey, that's what's up, man. I really dig it, for real. Because uh, the attitude, nothing can touch the attitude era. That was my era. My man was growing up, was The Rock. Like, I was just hands down. If you smell what The Rock is cooking, doing the eyebrow, everything, man. And just, you know, his ultimate rival, Stone Cold, just... Man, like that was that was the ultimate time. So I, I definitely feel what you're saying, and also you know being a you know wrestler yourself now, you know with the confidence. I love that man. You know that's what you gotta have. You gotta. I'm your favorite. You, you know you're your favorite wrestler. So that's what's up. You were kind of like the you know the new Dwayne Johnson. So I mean, what, what what's going on with that? I don't know. I mean, <laughs> I, I don't know. They call me the blue chipper a lot. You know, and yeah. um, I mean that's cool. I don't think they're comparing me to him. Um, but I'd be a liar. If I say that he didn't influence my style, one yeah. of my many influences, I left out the great Macho Man. Um, if you look at my, my my wrestling wardrobe, it's inspired by the Macho Man with the Tony Batista twist. Um, Macho Man is probably like, if I had a pick, gun to my head, single most important influence as a wrestler, it, uh, it'd be him. But I mean, it's so many. But uh, yeah, yeah, I mean, it, it, the blue chipper, and that's cool. You know, I'm the young guy, the new guy on the block. Um, I relocated from Texas about a year ago. And now, um, you know, I'm dubbed the blue chipper. And that's cool. But, I mean, I'm no rock. Um, I do have the last name Batista. But, you know, I've said before, um, real game, no gimmicks. Um, I'm not here. To, I'm not trying to be like Dave Batista. In fact, his last name isn't Batista. It's with a U. I am Batista. Um, that's, that's my given name. That's me. Um, I didn't want to use that name at first, but out of respect for the person who broke me in the business, like under his tutelage and advice, uh, I went with his idea. Um, I will have a name change coming soon, but y'all stay tuned to that. But uh, this is real life, no gimmicks to me. You know, what I mean, this is what you see, what you get. Um, I, you, it's just, it's, it's just 110. Um, percent It's just raw, raw, old school wrestling mixed with a new school twist, and that's what I bring to the table. Mm. Okay, man. Hey, I dig it, man. I'm here for it. I'm all. I'm all the way here for it. We spoken about getting it, uh, breaking into the business. How was it? How was it for you breaking into the uh, wrestling business? It was challenging, but it was so motivating. Um, I came into see wrestling is not. People have their their, their own pre preconceived notions of what wrestling is, and whether it's the f word or you know meaning fake or not. Um, it's all irrelevant because those are the people that don't know and they don't care to know because they're not the fans. Um, they're not into our niche sport. But wrestling, professional wrestling is very much a sport regardless of how it's presented. And, and, and it takes a certain level of physical acumen to be able to do what we do for a living. When I broke into the business, I came to the business in shape. I was an instructor, uh, you know, doing a and I, my, my physical fitness was at its peak, I, I, I'd like to say. Um, when I went to that wrestling, uh, that, that academy for the first day, you know, I was, I, I was smoked. I mean, I can't, I was done. I was shaking. I was, you know, I was fatigued. And, you know, I was in pain. Um, it's not easy. And it takes a level of your, your body has to get acclimated to what we do. And then you have to take it seriously to continue to do those types of drills and, and, and make sure your cardio is in check because wrestling is no joke. It's, it, it's one of the hardest things. Aside from stuff in my military career, it's one of the hardest things I had to do. But the difficulty never deterred me because I knew in my mind that it was now or never. And I didn't give myself many options. 
you know, I had to make this work. You know, I had to graduate this class, the school. I had to have my first match. You know, I, I just, it just, I, I didn't think the what is. I just think this, you're here. You know, and uh, people are depending on me. You know what I mean? I don't have, I don't have time to waste. I know people say that because they want things now, but I legitimately do not have time to waste. Like, I, I need to succeed in this. So it kept me going, but it's definitely not easy for anybody interested in uh, how to become a wrestler. Find yourself a, a credible school, number one. A credible, not somebody, not some place that's gonna take your money and teach you baloney. Um, a credible school is gonna break you in and teach you and raise you the right way in this business. Um, and that's gonna work you. If you ain't working hard and it's easy, then they probably ain't training you right. Hey man, you right, hey, you right. I like that, I really, I really do. Uh, you spoke on the military though. How, when did you get into the military? Uh, I was in 2005, uh, things were going on and back home and I was going to junior college and playing baseball. I was working at Starbucks too. <laughs> and uh, it just, things were a lot of, uh, let's just say less than favorable things were happening in my life. Not, not that I was a bad kid or anything, it was uh, I wasn't. It wasn't things that I was calling upon myself. It was things that were occurring that I had no control over, unfortunately. And I said, you know, I gotta get out of here. And my best friend is in the Navy, so I decided to go to a recruiter's office. I went to a recruiter office that had all four branches there, and I I went through each recruiting uh, every branch, and I spoke to the recruiter, and I pretty much based the branch <laughs> based on the recruiter. And the recruiter that I was vibing with was probably the recruiter that I was gonna talk to. And the one that paid least attention to me because she was doing all right for herself was the Air Force recruiter. And I'm like, well, there's something to this. And I spoke to her. I told her what I wanted to do. Uh, she said, fine, if you reach this criteria, we could make it happen. She did. And I joined the military. Not, you know, for, I, 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 once again, I, I joined the military because I didn't have enough. I felt, even though in retrospect, I did have options. I felt at that time I didn't have other options and I had to make it work. So I, 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 I focused on the task at hand, whether I liked it or not. And I made, and I actually made something out of myself, man. I could, I could, I could, I could confidently say <laughs> that I was somebody in that world. Um, I achieved a lot too much to the point that is, um, people are either sad or shocked that I'm no longer part of that world. Um, uh, but that's a, another story for an in-depth day, I guess. <laughs> Okay. Okay. So you were just, you know, lost in life and just trying to figure out, figure out things, you know, just get into basically. Right. In the military, in the military was just there. Right. You know, how can I, how can I get the most out of life, provide for myself and be on a, put myself on a trajectory where I could, uh, you know, set myself up for the future. If I had a future outside military work, which at the time I didn't think I, I did. And um, in my mind, that was the only option I had. I mean, I'm sure I could have thought, could could have, could have toughed it out and done two things, but it, you know, you play the what if game, you know, the mon Monday morning quarterback. If I had stayed in the Bronx, maybe X, Y, would have happened. Maybe not. It wasn't a chance I was willing to take. So I just said, you know what, I'm out of here. And, you know, out of anger, um, I said, I'm out of here. And, and I, and this, but it luckily it worked out, man. Yeah. Hey, life is all about the chances, man. Life is all about chances. Uh, it was, you know, a couple of years ago, man, I was just, you know, just feeling stuck, you know, in life, just trying to figure out what to go, man, what to do. And, you know, this podcast thing, you know, it came around, you know, and I always kind of, you know, wanted to do this, but I didn't, you know, know what to do or didn't really have that many two opportunities because, you know, I was, you know, in, in a wheelchair and stuff like that. But, you know, I just was like, yo, man, I, I got something going, you know, I'm going on two years in December with this and I just been connecting with people and, you know, having guys like, if, if it was JTG from, you know, Crime Time on or independent wrestlers from, you know, yourself, Tony Batista on, it's amazing. So, you know, like, I understand. It's all about the process and, you know, like, it's going to take you some time. So you're doing what you're doing now, though. You're doing what you're doing now. And from the military, uh, you get into wrestling. How was that transition? It was the transition to the mindset-wise, it was actually easy. There's a lot of par it's a lot of parallels between the wrestling world and, and, and um, and, 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 um, in the military, uh, both from a pros and cons perspective, uh, okay. a lot of clown stuff that goes on in both worlds, but a lot of regiment, reg regiment and discipline. Not understand, not every pro wrestler or every train trainee has that discipline that it takes to, to, to make it. And uh, contrary to popular belief, not every person in the military has discipline and what it takes to, 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 to succeed either. Um, but um, 
as far as that mindset, you know, uh, just being open to, to, to learn and coach and I have an ego and just do your thing and, and, and how you approach certain things. It's very, it's very military-like in my mind. People don't realize that because they don't have that to compare to, but I do. So um, if anything, it was easier because I went literally in the same day, I went from a place of authority where I was yelling and doing all these things and I was just on a 15 to being the new guy and just being the guy who sits back and listens and just does. And that was kind of a refreshing feeling almost. You know what I mean? Yeah, you had some clowns there that were young and they know nothing about life trying to tell you what to do. And I was like, that ain't right. But you, because you're old and mature, you just went in out one ear out the other, you know? But as far as my trainer, um, it was just easy to just sit back and just listen. And that was a, that's just, it was, it was a, it was easy. You know what I mean? My job is to sit back and listen and just do. Oh, oh. Hey. Easy. Hey, this um, was- but, but discipline is, um, the discipline is pretty much the same because you gotta understand my whole all I know for my whole adult life is just being in the military. So anything that I picked up character wise is either stuff that I picked up from my childhood or because of the military. And now I transfer that same attitude into the into the wrestling business. And uh it's kind of why I have a chip on my shoulder, you know what I mean? Not because of the military, just because the whole attitude and my character is just designed that way. Um and I'm just hungry, you know what I mean? That hunger it starts from the military days. Hey, that's what's up. That's what's up. You speak of the military and, you know, uh, and earlier we were talking about, you know, mental health. How, how, how did you, uh, you know, stay positive, you know, as far as, you know, with your mindset? Because, you know, a lot of people who come out the military sometimes don't, you know, go you know, in the right direction. So how did you handle that? Well, I, I can't sit here and just say, you know, paint the, the pretty picture. I'm a work in progress. I got to, I have to be honest and transparent with your listeners because they need to really you got to keep it real because not everything is uh how you say peaches and rainbows yeah it happen in life mm-hmm. and uh, i'm a work in progress um but i do try to focus on every single day is like a refresh plan you know um every single day i have to coach myself and set that rhyme and set that mindset whether it's writing something down reciting it in the morning or whatever it is, words of affirmation, or any simple thoughts, like today I'm not going to do this. And then tomorrow I'll see the same, today I'm not going to do this, just to keep myself on track. Because today I and establish that routine to better myself. Because if I let that routine go for one day, for example, Monday through Friday, I have to adjust my mindset to be positive because X, Y, and Z. And then Saturday's my day off at work. So I'm just like, you know what? I can take a break. It don't work that way. You have to 24-7, 365, be conscious of your attitude and your actions and what you're thinking and how you feel and be in tune with that so you can better yourself. So, um, yeah, I mean, I, 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 I was recommended to seek out help. I've done that. Um, it doesn't work for me as well as it does for other people. Um, but certain other, other things that I do and talking to certain people in my life, for example, my wife, it does help me cope a lot. And... I l- I'm lucky enough to have a profession that helps me deal with my issues every single day, which is professional wrestling. Professional wrestling and baseball are the two things in life that I had that where I could have had anything going wrong for me. When I'm in those zones, the only problems affecting me are the problems as it relates to that re- to wrestling. For example, if I'm, pract- if I'm training something and something doesn't work out the right way and I'm doing over and over and now I'm mad because I can't get it right, well, that's my problem. I'm mm-hmm. mad at that. Not mad at whatever else outside of uh, uh, you know, anything environmental is affecting me. And that's the release and, and, and that, that, that wrestling offers me. So I, I encourage people who are suffering from any type of mental illness to find that something that helps them cope. Um, but then practice all those other self-improving, uh, life-improving, those soft skills, you know, to make you a better person for yourself and for people around you. Um, but you have to create that habit to, to, to um, um, and just put it into practice every single day because I'm doing it five days a week, it's just not conducive to um, bettering your life because mental health is, it's, it's, it's not, it's not, uh, can I say it, man, back in the day, you know, I know my family, certainly it was a thing that was like, man, you don't have no problems. You don't know what problems are. You too. Young. And we know now that yeah. that's not the, and mental illness is complex. There's no such thing as, well, I've been through worse than you, so you can't have it as bad. It's not, no, it's very complex and it affects people differently. Um, so you have to have establish a, 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 a network of communication people you can trust and talk to uh, or, or an activity a healthy activity that's going to help you um cope with those issues because these issues don't disappear from day to night and that's the sad tr- truth about it uh, so i'm a work in progress man and every single day i wake up and i have to uh, 
treat every day as new. Treat every day as new. And when okay. issues, I have to kind of revert to those techniques that I developed in the past to try to help me deal with whatever obstacle I'm, I'm facing, you know? Yeah, that's well said. I like that. Real well said. Because, you know, everything, you know, don't work for everybody, though. But, hey, you know, once you find your niche and once you find what works for you, stick with it, man. For real. And, you know, you're in the wrestling business, so you get the power bomb people for a living, man. So you should be good, man. <laughs> <laughs> you should be good, man. But speaking of wrestling, you guys, we're going to move on on the podcast. Speaking of wrestling, um, what's something, once you got into the business, what's something that you had to learn fast Uh as you go, you know, in the wrestling business, or you might sink. Oh, the, the the number one rule that you hear from all the old heads, tough young guys: slow down. You know, oh. your mind goes a hundred miles an hour, and you're thinking about what's next, what's next, what's next, what's next, and you feel like you're going, you're moving like a turtle, but in all reality, you're going. Mm -hmm. Old heads like, breathe, slow down, and it's you know, I'm not saying I perfected it or nothing like that. But it's something that I have, I always have it in my mind. Just take it easy, slow down, slow and smooth, smooth and steady, kind of a thing. And that's the that's that's the thing right there. Um, as far as other wrestlers, um, adjusting to wrestlers could be difficult depending on the skill level or how uh, open they are to listening um, on the fly. Um, being in the ring is an art form, and uh, there's certain ways to do that art form. And, it, and not everybody's in tune with how to do that art that way. Um, yeah. So it could be a challenge, but that's kind of what kind of what I like, you know, because there's gonna be that day where I'm, when I'm in that ring with that seasoned veteran. For example, September 26th, I'm going on with, I'm going, I'm, I'm taking on the, the Prince of Camden, Deshaun Pratt, um, seasoned veteran who's been literally, literally all over the world. Um, that's gonna, those, 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 uh, those challenges in the past are going to help me elevate my game to bring my A game to him, you know, and I'm pretty sure after I get out of that match with him, I'm going to find myself on another level, reaching another echelon um, just because I took on him. Um, so it's, 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 just, it's just, it's a ladder, you know what I mean? You take each experience and you apply what you learn to this one to the next one. And then you try to make less and less mistakes, try not to repeat the same mistakes twice. And then you keep evolving. Okay, man. Hey, that's good. That's good advice, man. And that's that's good to know. I dig it. Um, as far as the wrestling business, man, and getting into it, yo, you've been you've been doing your thing. Um, what you think on today's today's wrestling though? Like how, how today's wrestling is planning out. So I don't I don't judge TV shows as a pro, pro wrestler, and I'm gonna tell you why. Fans, please judge however you want to judge. You're the consumer. You're the one that pays your hard-earned money to, 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 to watch these guys live, to watch me live. Think what you want. I'm never going to critique you for liking or not liking something. I think that's silly, right? Free, it is a free country. Think how you want to think. I like people thinking differently. I, I personally do, whether I agree with it or not. Um, and, but here's the thing. Guys are people critique people who are on TV, but how much money are you making compared to them? <laughs> I mean, I'm, I, I got to call it how I see it. You know what I mean? Um, but that said, I like, I love wrestling. I love every type of wrestling as long as it makes sense. But not every type of wrestling is for me. Um, there's certain genres within this, this, the, the, the subculture of professional wrestling that's not for me. Um, let's say uh, I don't high fly. I don't do hardcore. Uh, like, um, excuse me, I don't do death matches. I, it's not for me. Now, given the right circumstances, would I do it? Well, maybe. But it has to make sense and it has to be under the right circumstances. But only because I don't do it doesn't mean I don't like it. Um, so today's wrestling is just that. It's a little bit of new. And now we have some guys that are out there that sprinkle some of that old school. I certainly do. But we also need to understand that uh, a certain demographic of fans, they want to see some hard-hitting, high-flying, high-impact stuff. You know, our mind spans are so short that if you put me on TV and I'm giving you a slow, methodical match, you may say, you know what? Let me see what's going on in the next channel. So I got to keep that high impact. I keep things going and moving and, you know, and give you that action that you guys want to trade, you know, and then some old school fans are like, well, slow it down. I like that, but that's only this demographic. So you have to find it. Me, I try to find that, that, that balance where I could provide a little something fun for everything. Um, but yeah, I don't have a problem with today's wrestling, man. I just think it's new. Um, some may make sense to me. Some may not, mm -hmm. but 
the caveat is it's, it's irrelevant what I think because I'm trying to make it to that level. Um, you know. Hey, I like that. I like that. That's what you, that's the level you're trying to make. So hey, it really don't matter though, man. I I, I enjoy all type of wrestling, man. From you know British, U.S., Mexico, all Lucha Libre. All of it, man. So it's just what a time to be alive to be a wrestling fan. So I tell you that. So that's we're, awesome. We're back to that feeling to where it was like, man, I could switch channels. I hate commercial breaks. <laughs> man, wrestling, commercial breaks, switch wrestling. You know, that brings me back to my childhood. It's a good time. Yeah, really good time, man. Really good time to be a fan of wrestling, for real. Now, speaking of wrestling, man, who's, your, who, who's some of your dream opponents that you would like to face? Man. You know, I get that, and you're gonna you're gonna be like, nah, you joking. I don't have uh dream matches. Um, I don't because to say one is to leave so many else, so many others out. And people, are like, well, you have to have a dream match. Well, I guess well, my dream match would be the, you know, one-on-one against the rock, but that's not gonna happen. He's not a full-time wrestler. I'm not signed to WWE yet, right? Um, but I will say this. What I want to do is wrestle simply the best. People who are considered weight the best in the in the world, whether it is on TV, in the independence, uh, whether you think that they outclass me in the wrestling ring, that they, they I mean they're they're light years away from me. Now I'm light years away from them as far as talent. And that's what you is that what you guys think? I want to be in the ring with that person because they say iron sharpens iron. And I'm not going to back down from anybody because I know what I bring to the table. And this is why I'm, I'm, I'm excited for all my matches coming up, whether it's September 11th uh, or the 26th or the, or the 25th. I'm excited for all my upcoming matches, but going against the Sean Pratt because that's the one that I, I know that I'm wrestling him. Um, I don't know who I'm wrestling in the other shows, but I know for sure because he's been advertising I'm wrestling him. This is why I'm excited for that because Iron Sharpens Iron. And he is a guy who's... Who's, who's been who's been all over the world and people know who he is because of let's face it the guy is just super talented he knows what he's doing he's it's just not an easy task to wrestle him but that's what I live for this is why I'm, I mean I'm not here to just take my time and and, 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 and and go the easy route no I'm going to go right through the competition it's the only way to succeed right man but don't want to give me that respect but I'm going to I'm going to take it mm. I'm going to take it because there's a there's a lot of I, I feel like people are dis- I think people are misinformed as to wrestling as it pertains to his talent. And it's kind of getting me aggravated a little bit because um uh people who we think are wrestlers are not really wrestlers. When I walk out that current, that music hits and you see me, there's no denying that I am a professional wrestler. Underline the word professional, capitalize the P. I am a professional wrestler, and there's no denying it. By looking at me, the way I act, the way I treat, the way I the, the way I treat this this business, the way I I treat my body, do everything, do everything I do revolves around wrestling. It's not a, just a Saturday at seven o'clock thing. It's a twenty four hour thing to me. You know what I mean? It's, it's, it's this is this is my job. You know, it's my career. You know, and, and, and it's and it's time for this to be displayed on on full screen where everybody needs to know and understand that. Oh, that's that Tony Batista. Okay, he's a real. Yeah, I like that, man. For real. I dig the confidence. For real, man. I really do. You guys, man, you got to put some respect on Tony Batista's name, man. For real. He tired of this. For real. You got to put some respect on it, man. You got some big events coming up. You just mentioned big event. September 11th by Super Crazy Wrestling, man. Um, Tell my listeners about that. And also, uh, Keystone Championship Wrestling, September 26th is going down also. Tell my listeners, man, where they can find you at and tell them, man, come out and support it. Well, yeah, Super Crazy. Uh, professional wrestling is going to be in uh, Westfield, New Jersey. Uh, early showtime, 12 o'clock is bell time. Uh, and Super Crazy is my home away from home. Uh, Super Crazy slash Skid Row Academy, which is the training school, they took me in. You know, I came from, from San Antonio, had nowhere to train, to train during the pandemic. And luckily, to some of the one of the guys in the circuit, he had recommended I stop by there. And uh, they took a liking to me. And now there's that's family. And uh, yeah, I wrestled for them. I won their super crazy United States championship, my first match there. And against another seasoned veteran. Um, and every match that they book, it's a great match. I'm talking about from start to finish. 
And yes, we have names, people who have been on TV that go there to, to, to do what they do best. But even people who you may have not even heard of, they're going to entertain you. And that's, a, and that's like a guarantee. That's like a guarantee. Uh, so what can you expect from me there? You can expect the champ to be champ and do champion stuff. You want to see a championship caliber match? And why I am a United States champion? And it's not fluff, no gimmicks? Come check us out. Early showtime. It's going to be a great, I'm talking about, it's going to be a great car from top to bottom. I mean, headlining is, 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 is the super crazy heavyweight champion, which is Black G's. You don't know Black G's, you're living under a rock. Um, and he's their champion. Um, Keystone Championship, <laughs> again, opportunity of a lifetime going against uh, Deshaun Pratt. I can't wait to uh, put my hands on him. And uh, I'm not afraid of pain. Been there, done that. I know he's going to bring it not taking him lightly in fact i'll be a fool if i did that um he is one of the best out there bar none i'm not saying that because he's my opponent i'm not giving him his respect because i'm i'm being a good sportsman no f- screw him i'm gonna beat his ass but i have you gotta call a spade a spade man you can't i can't be delusional he is legitimately one of the best in the world so that's gonna help me elevate my game um to further solidify why my thoughts are true which is that I am la maldita crema. That means the cream, the tippity top that this business has to offer. They want to call me the blue chipper. Listen, I don't care. Just know that I'm good and I'm bringing it. Hey, man. You're going to bring it, man. I dig it. I really dig the energy, Tony Batista, man. I like it, for real. Before you go, man, with all the excitement that you got surrounding you, man, what's, what, what keeps you motivated? What keeps you going? And what inspires you? A, f- a few things keep me motivated. You know, I have a family. I got a wife and two kids. That's always at, at at the core of what I do. Everything that I do, I have to make sure it fits with that lifestyle. Because if not, then what am I living for? Um, but a few things keep me motivated, man. And I have to find these motivations. As it pertains to wrestling, that's my motivation. I want to be the best. And that never goes. But as far as living life, in light of this uh, mental health thing, the motivations, they, 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 they come to me, oddly enough. Uh, whether it's a DM from a former student, from people who who I served with that still seek my advice. Because like I said, I'm only a year removed and you know, I was somebody, not to, to sound conceited because that sounds horrible, um, but I was somebody. And uh, and I realized that now, I didn't realize it then, but I realized that now people call me for advice and, and it keeps me motivated that I have to do certain things a certain way to keep going and keep pushing because they're looking they're looking at me as a source of, of, of motivation. What they don't know is that I'm, <laughs> I'm using them as my motivation to keep going. Um, so the kids, my wife, and then everybody else who's in the struggle right now, you know, that keeps me motivated because, you know, they're still in the struggle. So why shouldn't I be out there working for them, um, working hard to keep going, to showing them there's a way to, to move past any obstacle? Because um, because words are words, you know. That's you know everything we do in recovery for for mental health, anything, it work, things are easier said than done. But if you lead by example, you know, it holds more weight, it's more substance to the words. Mm. Where well, you see yourself at in the next five years in the rest of this? I have to be signed, man. I have to be um, on, I don't know what company, I don't care what company, but I have to be on TV. In fact, I have to be on TV within the next four and a half years. Um, if not, I'm gonna have to reassess certain things. Um, I have a very specific goal, like I told you earlier. Like people always say, I don't have time to waste. Like, no, I, uh, it could be a bad thing. It could be a fallacy for some people because you have to be patient. Things happen in due time. And that's just the way it is. Yeah. But, but I have a sense of urgency that's not normal um, for my for, for, my, for a lot of reasons. So that's why I give you that real specific goal. And within four and a half years, almost five, I have to be on TV somewhere. Don't care to what company, but I have to be on TV. Um, if not, then I'm gonna have to reassess, go back to the drawing board and reassess what's going on. Um, it just has to be that way. And then when I make it to wherever I make it, then I wanna be on the top of that food chain because I'm not happy with just, I'm never happy. So I'm not happy with just being signed. If I reach that goal, great cool but when the next hour kicks after i realize this goal has been realized i have to see i have to start attacking the next goal which is how do i climb to the top of that echelon everywhere i go i have to climb to the top because if not why am i even wrestling for um you not here for the you know it's so contradicting that i'm in a business that requires success is synonymous with uh fame in in this business um so it's contradict, contradicting the fact that I don't care for the fame. You know what I mean? I really want to succeed in this business because I want to succeed in anything I do. 
and I love wrestling. And I don't love wrestling for the fame. I love wrestling because I just love wrestling. Mm -hmm. And now that I got a taste of being a professional wrestler, I love wrestling that much more. You know what I mean? Because things can happen. You can love wrestling as a fan, seek out that good, credible school that I was talking about, start training, realize, eh, maybe I'm better off loving wrestling as a fan. And there is nothing wrong with that because not everybody could do what we do for a living. That's just the way it is, you know? So there's nothing wrong with that. But I'm for fortunate enough, I was fortunate enough to 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 feel what it's like to 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 struggle as a trainee and as a professional wrestler and love it. So because of that, you know, um, I just got to be the best of what I do. Um, hey man, I dig it. I really do, man. I love the motivation, bro. Hey, keep at it for real. Keep at it, and time waits for nobody for real. Times waits for nobody, and uh, and eventually, you know, time, you know, of course, things will, will fall in place. But yo, I, I definitely. Got big hopes for you, man. And yo, you, it's gonna come true. As long as you, you know, put it out there in the universe and speak it, man, it's it's definitely gonna come true, man. You don't definitely wanna be complacent in the wrestling business. You don't you, you, a lot of people say if you didn't get in the wrestling business to win championships, then you know, or you know, to succeed, then what you here for? To sit in catering? You know, I mean, the food tastes nice at times, but I mean, damn, <laughs> you know, you wanna be in the middle of the ring, you know, so. I definitely feel what you're saying, Tony Batista. Yo, man, I appreciate you joining me this week here on the 1130 Podcast Talk Pro Wrestling. Before you go, any shout-outs, any questions for me, anything you'd like to say? No, nah, man, just thank you for having me on. Congratulations uh, for your success in the podcast. Um, thank you for just offering me a platform for me to do my to, to share my story and, and just hopefully shed a little light of who, who Tony Batista is as, as a wrestler. You know what I mean? It's more to me than that, but, I mean, that's what we're here for, and I'm, and I'm really grateful um, I'm forever in depth to that. And anytime you want to do it again, you know, just, just holler at me and I'm there. And uh, you can follow me at Tony Batista 08 on Instagram, Tony Batista on Facebook. Um, I have a YouTube at Tony Batista and it'll be back up and running starting uh, mid October. Mid October. There's going to be a little bit of a scenery change in my life. And um, I'm going to start that back up again. And yeah, any promoters out there uh, that want to book me, anywhere i don't care where yeah I'm, I'm 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 a new yorker live in new jersey um i don't care where you at i have a more than capable vehicle and it'll get to where i gotta go um just hey. hit me up or we'll do business you book it i cook it um, hey. <laughs> i like that i like that real i like that yo tony batista man i appreciate you, you guys man follow him on all social medias and uh, check them out wherever you're in your area, New York, New Jersey, wherever, man. Tony Batista, thank you, man, for joining me this week here on the 1130 Podcast Talk Pro Wrestling. Thank you, guys. Yo, Tony Batista, man, I appreciate you joining me this week here on Talk Pro Wrestling, man. That was awesome time, man, for real. Awesome time. Each and every week is awesome. Each and every week, it just get better and better and better, man. And I thank, man, the Father that we are in heaven, man will just allow me to keep connecting with people, uh, like-minded people in the podcast world, wrestling world, especially here on Friday. Every Friday we'll talk pro wrestling. So in the wrestling world, you know, because I grew up, man, a wrestling fan. I, I wasn't in the, you know, the 80s, man, in the 90s, but I knew Hulk Hogan, man. I knew Macho Man, and you know, all those guys, man, my guy was the rock, man, hands down. Stone Cold was my number two, but of course, man, you know, just growing up in, you know, that era and just so many guys, man, like it's so many people that I love, man. So many wrestlers that I love. And uh, yo, I love this conversation, this episode here today with Tony Batista. Yo, he's the WWWA heavyweight champion, man. Yo, yes, the, the, the super crazy, you know, like United States champion. He's doing his thing, the Texas heavyweight associate. Man, like I he said, I got these belts, but yo, man, it's not, I'm not happy, man. And that's how you gotta do it, man. That's how you got to do it. You know, I, I reach a, a goal of mine here on the podcast and I'll be doing this or that, or I may reach a, a thousand subscribers on YouTube and I'll be like, okay, cool. But I can't stop. You got to keep going because once you get a complacent and once you just like, okay, all right, then that's what things, you know, fall off. So you got to keep pushing at it, man. You really do. 
you know so and time waits for nobody so you know if you you, you gotta go out set it you know and, and accomplish it don't let nobody try to throw you off or tell you what you can or can't not do man for real it's a lot of those in, in the world stay off twitter <laughs> you know so man for real this was awesome this was really really awesome shout out to tony batista shout out to all my independent pro wrestlers out there wrestlers you know so keep doing your thing man keep doing your thing man wrestling is it's life. Wrestling is life, man. For real. Yo, this was awesome. This was really, really awesome, man, on this beautiful Friday, you guys. Yes, I hope everybody um, is enjoying their beautiful Friday. Hope everybody is going to enjoy their weekend. I'm enjoying my weekend. I'll see you guys next Friday here on Talk Pro Wrestling. Hope everybody watch SmackDown tonight, Rampage, or whatever. Um, for the next couple of weeks, you guys, I'm gonna try to have some more independent pro wrestlers here to shine some light on them, tell their story, you know, chop it up, man. Having some fun here on the podcast. So it's gonna be really cool, man. So yeah, you guys, so um, stay tuned. And follow my guy, you guys, Tony Batista, on all social media platforms. Yes, awesome show, for real. Really, really awesome show, you guys. But I'm out of here. I'm out of here, you guys. Before I do, don't forget, you guys, to follow the 1130 Podcast on all social media platforms. Follow the 1130 Podcast on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at the 1130 Podcast. Yes. Facebook, Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. You know, some Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, the eleven thirty podcast. You guys, if you would like to be a guest here on the podcast, email me. That's the eleven thirty podcast at gmail.com or just DM me on social media so we can work. Man, for real, it's been an awesome show, you guys. I see you next week here on the podcast for Talk Pro Wrestling, and I will also see you guys this Wednesday on the eleven thirty podcast streaming on EB Radio and YouTube. Yes. Yo, go subscribe to the 1130 Podcast on YouTube. Tell somebody about the 1130 Podcast. Yes, man. I'm out of here, don't out of here. You guys enjoy your weekend. Have fun and stay safe. Stay blessed. Stay cool, for real. Yo, it's your man Dre, a.k.a. Dre on wheels. And I'm out.